Hey, 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 you guys. How are you today? Today is October 3rd, 2018. My name is Riz and welcome to EOS Marketplace News. And I'm here to bring you up to date with the latest EOS currency uh, news today. And before we start, um, let me just remind you that we are not financial advisors. Um, rather, we are a gathering of rumors and good news about EOS and to help our viewers uh, understand what EOS is and what's been going on with Block.1 and that is the um, developer of EOS IO. Okay, so if this is your first time watching our video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get the latest out of EOS Marketplace news. All right, so today I would like to talk to you about DPoS or Delegated Proof of Stake. Now, Delegated Proof of Stake is one of the characteristics of EOS that has captured the interest of many crypto fans. Now, let's take a closer look as to what DPoS, re uh, DPoS really is. All right, so Delegated Proof of Stake is a consensus model which seeks to supersede the likes of Progenitor's Proof of Work, or POW, and Proof of Stake, POS, with promises of increased efficiency and greater representative democracy amongst coin holders with regards to platform decision making. A consensus mechanism is how blocks are verified with inbuilt uh, protocol to attempt to prevent uh, attempt to prevent faults such as unintended forks. Rather than its predecess uh, predecessors, DPoS has been described as many as being more akin to what is called the proof of action rather than its namesake of POS. It has also been described as an approach in which people in a particular cryptocurrency community vote for witnesses to secure their computer work. Now, what is it? So, delegated proof of stake isn't at all similar or dissimilar from POS when you look at it. The investors uh, stake their own token holdings in a vote procedure which decides the appointment of a select member of delegates or witnesses rather than a free-for-all minor approach of the POWR proof of, uh, proof of work. Now, these individuals are responsible for a wide range of important responsibilities pending to network operation. At any point, stake, uh, stakeholders can revoke their vote of confidence in these delegates if they feel that they, ha or they are under underperforming or incapable of their duties. Since DPoS is an as yet lesser adopted consensus mechanism, there is a wide range of different approaches in place at present and little in the way of standardized definitions. To best understand the ways in which it can be applied as well as the different interpretations of, uh, of this still nascent uh, technology available present. Number one is decentralizing e-commerce. Now, what does that mean? So, Cyber Miles intends to utilize a combination of trusted and original technologies with the intention of decentralized, uh, decentralizing e-commerce through decentralized blockchain technology. Now, the platform intends to mit, uh, migrate to its own independent blockchain on October 15th this year and currently resides on the Ethereum blockchain. However, it incorporates the uh, delegated proof of a stake. Now, CMT cubes are one of the most unique aspects of the Cyber Miles approach and they play the role of delegators. The cubes are hardware based and act as primary method of staking internal uh, currency or CMTs towards the election of blockchain validators. Now, they will be available for investors to purchase and they are also promised to feature an easy to use user interface along with an inbuilt security features and low power consumption. The team's proprietary programming language for smart contracts and decentralized applications is entitled Litty and acts as the foundation for all projects built on their 
uh, platform. It will also be cross uh, compatible with Solidity and the time will tell, only time will tell as to whether Cyber, My uh, Cyber Miles' approach will be successful with token pre-sales along with cube sales and launch of their mainnet set to begin as soon as October 15th this year. Now, EOS is a project with massive token and this is proven on record with eponymous cryptocurrency ranking at number 5 on CoinMarketCap's top 100 listing. It is valued at $5.25 US dollars as of today per piece at the time of writing with a $4 billion uh, I mean 4 billion dollar uh, 4 billion 756 million 512,072 uh, US dollars market capital. Now, the EOS ecosystem has been referred to widely as a blockchain infrastructure for commercial scale, uh, commercial scale de uh, decentralized applications, as well as the first blockchain operating system. Now, with EOS implementation of DPoS, we can quite literally state that the coin fuels the operation of the uh, of this platform. With what's called the approval voting, each EOS token holder can take part in a voting process where they are allowed to stake their holdings towards a maximum of 30 candidates. Investor power is proportional with a single token counting for a single vote and the end of the process is a total of 21 validators chosen. These validators are referred to uh, by EOS as blockchain producers. Now, EOS has also been a victim of a handful attacks due to its popularity exposing security flaws in their system but despite this uh, but despite this it still remains popular as well as receiving attention in hacked.com's trade recommendation section now Another is decentralizing the internet. Now, Tron is the final project which we will be investigating and it's another top ranking coin at market caps aggregates. Now, a multifaceted blockchain based project and utility token which incorporates a wide range of technologies, Tron's ethos is the facilitation of the decentralization of the internet the company's flagship product is called tron protocol and like eos it posts itself as something as a blockchain based operating system acting as the foundation for d apps and other projects to build their own solutions additional um, creations available at present include the Tron Blockchain Explorer and Project Genesis, which is a reward pool distributed as incentives for events such as programming contests as well as the Tron Accelerator Loan. Now, Tron uh, goes as far as to call their DPoS approach TPoS to differentiate to differ differentiate it from many other interpretations which exist. One of the most impressive um, factors in comparison to peers its size uh, is the size of the delegate community which they have achieved. Now they call delegate super representatives and they have 143 of them in addition to the 937 online nodes. Like the change in names, most of the changes from DPoS here are superficial and do not represent any major differences in technical operation. Now, the coin has been reportedly showing signs of promise with regards to uh, market value for its proprietary of TRX coin recently. Now, the future of a delegated proof of stake has raised a lot of questions within the crypto community, particularly to its experimental nature. However, samples like um, examples such as Cyber Miles, EOS, and Tron demonstrate promising and successful implementation of the protocol. With the rise of DPoS based solutions, it would appear that we are likely approaching a moment where it may rank amongst and as a viable uh, alternative to the traditional uh, POW and POS consensus mechanisms. Some of these projects are even listed in the top 100 cryptocurrencies with regards to the market capitalization. 
Again, um, just to give you a recap about what EOS is, EOS is a blockchain and a smart contract platform that will directly compete with Ethereum. It is advertised as an operate, uh, operating system for decentralized applications. Now, the platform uses, uh, uses a delegated proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, which makes a fundamental trade-off to become more centralized, having 21 block producer rather than an infinite number of miners in a proof of work model in exchange for a, uh, a faster and more scalable network. Now the platform announced the consensus to uh, announced at the consensus 2017 is full of stack and there are no transaction fees which makes it a viable ethereum competitor or ethereum killer as some people call it. Now I see the smart contract platform wars being similar to operating systems uh, operating systems wars in the early days of the internet where Mac and Windows ultimately won. It's unlikely there will be a defined winner in the end and it's likely lit uh, it's likely that there will be a few dominant platforms that other fundamentally tr uh, different trade-offs to differentiate themselves from one another. Major players at this stage are Ethereum, EOS, Tron, Cardano, uh, Stellar, and Neo. Ethereum uses a proof of work consensus uh, model and has first mo um, mover, mover advantage in the smart contract and decentralized application platform space. Now, the platform, as the second highest value blockchain right now, is criticized for its high transaction costs, such as high gas prices and bearish market conditions. Another is their lack of scalability and low transaction throughput, which is only approximately 15 transactions per second, and the latency and transaction finality, which is six minutes to finalize a transaction. And the low, of course, the low ratio of transactions on the network work that come from applications. Now, Ethereum has not allowed developers to build consumer-grade application scale, which is a huge problem for the blockchain industry. Big actors in the public blockchain space right now are speculators, miners, and crooks, which are zero or negative sum activities. So there is no meaningful application, commerce, or value creation uh, happening right now. But it's, uh, Ethereum's main use case is supposed to be supporting applications, but less than 100% of the total transactions on the network are coming from the top 100 applications built on Ethereum. Now, the other 90% of transactions are coming from ICOs and payments. Now, and in the next few months will be a, a pivotal point for smart contracting platforms and specifically Ethereum because major applications such as Augur, Golem, and Mana Decentraland are launching on their platform. And if Ethereum cannot support the transaction throughput for these applications, which have combined value uh, valuations greater than $1.2 billion, they will be forced to build on top of a more scalable platform. So EOS IO is launching tomorrow and they already have a high profile uh, in, in their platform such as Everypedia. It is expected that the mainnet, uh, mainnet will be able to handle, uh, handle between 1,000 to 6,000 transactions per second shortly after launch and the software has made economic and performance trade-offs that acknowledge the fact that every single transaction in a global scale de uh, decentralized application being validated by a large network of computers around the globe is unnecessary and unrealistic. Your average consumer cares more uh, about performance than they do sovereign censorship resistance. Now, Block.1, a company that builds open source software, announced that they will be building EOS IO and releasing the software to the community to mitigate the risk of EOS being deemed a security. The ICO funds were advertised as being revenue to Block.1 and that they would not be used directly to build EOS IO. Block.1 orchestrated the longest token sale of any uh, of any project to date where they had an initial five-day crowd sale which raised 185 million US dollars followed by a 355-day crowd, uh, crowd sale. 
the team is expected to surpass the 4.2 billion dollar uh, us dollars raised in total which makes them the most capitalized blockchain project by far they currently have the broad uh, broadest pre-launch distribution of any public blockchain today so block.1 will not be launching the eos mainnet and they will just release the open source software now it is the community uh, it is up to the community to launch the main chain and hopefully block producers have formed a community allegiance to ensure a smooth launch uh, speculators and skeptics have argued that there is a risk that multiple main chains will be launched using the software which is a possibility by the way but highly unlikely there is a minimum adoption threshold to release the software built in the protocol level and Daniel Larimer, Block.1 CTO, has silently announced that they will use their voting shares, which is 10% of the total supply of EOS tokens, to ensure the launch goes as intended if needed. Ethereum has plans to innovate to become more scalable, including plasma sharding and switching to a proof-of-stake protocol, which are all intriguing options. If, however, okay, if, however, Ethereum is unable to accomplish these goals, then it will be confident to say that EOS will become the dominant smart contract platform in the medium term for the following reasons. Number one is scalability. All right, because EOS offers one second trans, uh, transaction finality and throughput of up to 6,000 transactions per second. It gives the speed that developers need to build uh, consumer grade global applications. Now, sub second finality op uh, also opens up the door for cross chain communication where chains can, can, uh, can communicate with each other horizontally. Now, one chain could reference another chain in real time, like for example, the age of someone in an identity blockchain, so that the main chain does not need to be slowed down with extraneous block details. Another um, reason for that is their fee-less economic model. Now, fees need to be paid somewhere in crypto monetary policy because there is always a cost to a secure network. In the case of Ethereum, either um, Ether is converted to pay variably uh, by network fees on every transaction. And transactions are paid directly by the transacting party known as the consumer now fees to secure the network in eos are paid through inflation where one percent of yearly inflation is allocated to the block producers now this means that the token holders are paying fees through increased supply rather than the end user now imagine a decentralized version of facebook where each time you liked, you commented, or engaged with a post, uh, with a post, you as the consumer need to pay a small network fee for. Now, fees are a cognitive burden for users that deter interaction. Free is hard to bargain with and is very market uh, marketable trait for EOS. Now, another note is that uh, decentralized applications or DApps on the network need to own tokens in order to have access in the network bandwidth. For example, if my um, uh, decentralized application needs 10% of EOS total um 10% of ES total uh, bandwidth uh, to operate efficiently, then I need to own or maybe lease 10% of the total supply of EOS tokens. With that in mind, since token holders are ultimately paying network fees in the form of inflation, then the burden of securing the network is put on dApps rather, on, uh, rather than on the consumers. Now, another... Um, another factor for that is team now this isn't teams uh this isn't larimer's first team now larimer has experience uh building two other high throughput low latency projects such as BitShares and steam now he built radically a different blockchain architecture for both of these projects since he pioneered the first stable coin created the first implementation of delegated proof of stake and grew the first de uh, decentralized application to gain widespread adoption. Now, Steemit processes 
process more transactions than any other blockchain today. As Larimer stated in an appearance on the Epicenter pro, uh, podcast, that he wanted to build a scalable platform with the developer tools that he's needed for the last 10 years. Now, he is a seasoned blockchain entrepreneur and he's learned how to win through execution, whereas other teams are developing their first project. The Block.1 team also understands how to win in an open source software uh, software world where anyone can copy your code, but it's much harder to copy your own uh, go-to-market strategy because um, solid uh, execution is rare and the um, how-to knowledge is very tacked or tacked. Uh, the blockchain industry in general has operated under a um, build it and they will come philosophy. Now that means that they um, that worked for Bitcoin, but that's not going to work for smart contract wars. Now, if you want to change the behavior of one hundreds of millions of people, you need to have a strong team with a focus on a growth strategy. Now, EOS is capitalized well already shown solid um, EOS is capitalized well enough to have a dominant go-to-market strategy and they've already shown solid execution by recruiting high-profile developers and dApps to build on their platform to be there as soon as the mainnet goes live. Now, another area of note is that some of the biggest players in the industry such as Bitmain, Bitfinex, uh, Bitfinex, and Hubie are running for the block producer election, which gives significant legitimacy uh, to the platform pre-launch. Now, EOS has added several features that the consumers expect in the mainstream platform, such as account and password recovery and human-readable usernames. Now, Ethereum accounts are represented by a string of numbers and letters, which is an unrealistic expectation for your non-technical average consumer to adopt. Now, your average consumer also does not accept the concept of a black hole where if you send your money to the wrong address which may by one digit off your money is gone poof forever now eos inherently gives us more uh the option and the protocol layer to make my username or our username like we can just say at risk gonzalez and users can send money to that public address rather than a public ethereum address such as uh, um um uh, uppercase O, lowercase X, C, uppercase F, C, A, 1, 3, and so on, so forth, right? Very complicated. Now, this is a monumental step up in the uh, protocol layer. Moving to human-readable username, uh, usernames is akin to uh, moving the typing in the IP address of Facebook to only having to type in the facebook.com URL. Uh, over $1.2 billion worth of Bitcoin and Ether have been stolen or lost in the last decade, a decade, and EOS offers a mechanism to recover lost funds. Now, another basic consumer expectation is that um, we will be able to regain our uh, access to our email account if ever we forgot the password. Now, EOS is the first application to build in a process for account recovery at the protocol level another great uh, factor that eos has is that their governance as we all know uh, eos is the first platform to have a community written constitution which has taken a lot of scrutiny in the past but i will address that in another article but this uh in another video now this constitution lays out peers to peer uh term of service and a hash of constitution in every transaction uh, is enforceable by the community now this is a social experiment that has never been done before so yes it might fail but nonetheless it is a novel approach to regulating internet behavior now major critics are that um, major critics are that block.1 drafted the original constitution which makes it decentral uh, i mean makes it uh, centralized rather it is a legislation without enforcement the arbitration model would not uh, will not scale and that the code will no is no longer law 
Now, to review those, any change in the constitution can be made with a 15 to 21 vote from the block producers. And if poor changes are voted for, block producer, uh, producers can be voted out in minutes enforcement is done by the community like for example if someone accepts payment for their vote it is the best interest of the community to report them and they risk losing their tokens now there are projects such as um, sagewise that are aiming to automate on-chain arbitration to scale cases and code being law is not accepted by your mainstream consumer yet as discussed earlier now um, in my uh, video, uh, as a market, um, since we are not really market analysts, I have just derived this from some um, article that I have read before. Um, in existing smart contract platforms, such a, as like what they said, um, in these existing um, smart contract platforms, such as Ethereum, your token is used to pay network fees. Now, this is subject to velocity problem, which means token value will not appreciate linearly with network adoption. However, with EOS, tokens are representation of network ownership and access to network resources. Now, a user that owns 1% of token supply is entitled to 1% of network RAM compute bandwidth and storage now this is ownership of digital uh, digital fungible real estate because it is a scarce resource with governance and ownership rights now as an owner of eos tokens you can lend your tokens to a decentralized application and uh, receive interest payments now users don't pay transaction fees instead they must own or rent eos tokens to transact economic uh, demand for the token should grow linearly with network adoption. Now, the blockchain-based peer-to-peer storage is a problem that some of the industry's high-profile projects are tackling, such as SIA, Filecoin, Storage, and uh, library. Now, Filecoin in September 2017 was the largest ICO ever at more than 250 million US dollars. Now, EOS brings a different model than all of these projects where you can have perpetual storage of staking your EOS tokens. And it is built directly into the protocol rather than through a third party where you need to own a utility token for payment. Now, token ownership gives you access to storage rights. Temporarily um, staking tokens for storage reduces supply and perpetually staking tokens for storage uh, effectively burns supply. Now, some people might ask, is EOS 2 centralized? Well, this common criticism depends on the definition of centralized or this depends on one's definition of decentralized because 21 block producers located in china is centralized and it is not censorship resistance now these 21 block producers spread around the world with campaign platforms that cater to this uh, diverse topics such as education hardware and community adoption is much more decentralized now the decision to choose the 21 block producers is up to the community and at least the amount of centralization is transparent now we know who uh, the block producers are and they are not anonymous and the community can monitor their behavior and vote out a nefarious actor in a matter of minutes savage now if you compare this to harsh rate or hash rate distribution uh, distribution and proof of work models a mining pool such as and pool can influence almost 20 percent of bitcoin transactions and the identity of the miners are mostly or if not all more opaque now this isn't a direct democracy and it's not claiming to be Anyway, EOS has a long way to go and I'm not claiming or nobody is claiming that they will take over Ethereum overnight. Overnight, But if Ethereum fails to innovate, then EOS is a platform that makes fundamental trade-offs that allow entrepreneurs and small business owners to innovate on a blockchain and create consumer-grade applications that we cannot yet imagine as possible. 
Now, in which case, there is a clear winner in the smart contract war and it's not the granddaddy of the ICO market. Updates on the upcoming EOS block producers elections. Um, EOS Alliance responds to rumors of vote buying. Now, this is after uh, the allegations of uh, Hubi Pool uh, buying or making voting cartels for the um, uh, block producer election this year. Now, the group steps in to claim that EOS community after allegations about Hubi Pool service. This controversy in the uh, this time, it seems to have started with a spreadsheet. Now, last week, EOS1 posted a document that it claimed proved collusion between Hubi Poll and several other block producers or BPs. Now, let me just show you that. Um, let me go ahead and show you that article that I've found about uh, that one. Yes, here it is. Now, this is uh, the article about EOS's um, alliance respond, uh, responding to rumors of vote buying. Now, let's read the article together now. All right. So, last week, EOS1 posted a document that it claimed proved collusion between Hubi Pool and several other block producers or BPs, besides showing that these companies colluded in order to maintain their positions as the top 21 BPs, which also allows them to produce blocks for the entire network. The document also indicated that Hubi had voted for three BPs. Those are EOS Space, Cochain World, and EOS... Uh, EOS IOS G11111 in exchange for kickbacks in the form of a share and their block rewards. The document had reportedly been leaked by a former Hubi employee, Shi Fei Fei. Denny Wu from Hubi Pool has asserted the document is fake and that its, uh, its release was timed to damage the launch of Hubi Pool token or HPT. All right. So this is brought to us by Telegram. Now, an EOS investor, Maple Leaf Capital, has been pushing the allegations against Hubi on Twitter while additionally claiming that the HPT itself functions as a vote buying tool. One of the ways to uh, obtain HPT is to lock up EOS tokens. Now in EOS, voting power is distributed according to EOS tokens hold, uh, token holdings. So locking up others tokens would serve to increase Hubi's voting power. Now Maple Leaf uh, capital doesn't stop there. The Canadian camp, uh, company claims that too much power is concentrating in the hands of Chinese block producers, with 12 of 21 being Chinese companies and implying that these companies are effectively working to form a cartel. It writes, uh, quote, this file document, uh, this file documents the collusion, mutual voting, and payoffs that occur amongst the uh, Chinese BP community before adding that Maple Leaf Capital's uh, proxy only votes for a very selective, uh, selective group of Chinese uh, block producers. And a Twitter at Maple Leaf Cap, uh, Capital uh, has tweeted, Quote, recently an internal Excel document from Hubi, one of the BPs, is circulating in the Chinese community. This file documents the collusion, mutual voting, and payoffs that occur amongst the Chinese block producer community. I'm working on getting the file. End quote. Hubi has made no statement or official denial on its website or its Steemit page. So far, the response has been limited to Wu's brief denials on Telegram, and the company hasn't even responded to Maple Leaf's Capital's uh, Twitter assault. But 
EOS Alliance an organization intended to facilitate communication between EOS community members has released a statement on the situation. Now, this statement signed by Thomas Cox seems intended to tamp down the controversy and prevent any further anti-Chinese sentiment from developing. Without mentioning who we pull by name, the statement says, quote, Serious allegations have recently been made in Telegram and press uh, and the press of voting abuse by supporters of some of the current top 21 block producers BPs and by other paid standby producers such abuse if it exists does raise a very serious question as to how uh, as to the long-term viability of the network however Cox's post calls on EOS members to give the dispute resolution uh, system founded on timeless principles of justice a chance to work he also points uh points out that there were geopolitical uh, considerations that should kept uh, that should be kept in mind quote chinese corporations and inventors are po uh, potentially being demonized and the consequences in china might be more dire for the individuals involved than they would be in other countries the community seeks to uh, seeks to provide reasons for the chinese government to increase the opportunities to legally engage with blockchain pro uh, projects and not create a sense that chinese token holders or bps are being unfairly picked on and quote all right so that's all for uh, the latest update on the bp uh on the a block producer a block producer election now by the way uh the eos hackathon grand finale is fast approaching and eos hackathon is the first global blockchain uh, hackathon worth uh, with 1.5 million us dollars in prizes across the five events uh, across the globe uh, with Hong Kong, Sydney, London, San Francisco, and the grand finale at Cape Town on December 7th. Alright guys, so I guess that's all for me for today on the latest EOS updates. And guys, before I go, I just want to share with you some of the websites that you, may find, uh, you might find useful uh, as... Uh, and the answer to the question as to where you can spend your EOS tokens on. All right, so I want you to intro, uh, I want to show you this cool, um, this very cool website right here. All right, let me just fix that on my screen so you can see it better. All right, there you go. And now um, the uh, this website. Uh, eosmarketplace.news and for those who didn't catch that i will um, post that in the description uh, section below okay as you can see once you enter that um that link on your address box it will lead you to this uh web page or um spreadsheet where you can see lots of items and services that you can use your eos tokens on like let's use for example one of the things right here one of the items here all right so you can see there's an item number and the general category for um, the general category for each item so as you can see um, this is the item number HL8 it's an antique truck and you can see there's the description over here in this section and the primary uh, payment method that the seller requires and the, of course the second uh, secondary uh, payment method now here is a section where you can see a link or a description uh, to the item and of course you can also email the seller for pictures of the item if they are not posted here and of course you can see here the um, the contact complete contact information of the uh, seller for each item so go ahead guys and check out these uh, websites to get more um, to get a hint as to where you can spend your ES tokens now also I would like to invite you to um, 
preferredcurrency.news. So all you need to do is to uh, sign in or sign up uh, for the, uh, to this website to get the latest out of EOS currency news and other cryptocurrency news. Okay, guys, I can I guess that's all for me from to, uh, for today. And thank you so much for tuning in. And please if, don't forget to subscribe and get the latest out of EOS Marketplace news. My name is Riz, and I will see you soon on my next video. Ciao.